Hi, I'm Arnie Gunderson from Fairwinds. This is the second December since the Fukushima Daiichi accident. Tokyo Electric released a report in September of this year, and they gave it to the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency. The report is a more thorough analysis of the explosions at Fukushima Daiichi, and it discusses things that they've learned in 2012 that they didn't incorporate in their analysis back in 2011. The report's posted on the site. I want to go to slide seven. Slide seven on the, uh, on the TEPCO presentation is a um, examination of where a Mark I containment can leak. Now, you've seen our famous video where the top of the containment lifts and gases are sliding out. Union of Concerned Scientists also identified it in 2011. And here, now finally in 2012, Tokyo Electric announces as an improvement to its analysis that, oh, by the way, containments can leak. Well, viewers of the Fairwind site have known that all along. But more importantly, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has known it since about 1976. We brought to your attention about the top of the containment lifting was known to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission since about 1976, when it happened at the Brunswick plant. But now, in slide number seven on the TEPCO slides, they say, oh my God, a, a Mark I containment can leak if the top begins to lift. They also show that the bottom of the containment can leak in an area where it's called the equipment hatch, almost an identical design as the top of the containment. And they also show that containment penetrations can leak. Well, this slide seven absolutely refutes something that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission said in a meeting that I was at just six months before the, the uh, accident. And it was an advisory committee on reactor safeguards meeting about containment integrity. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission staff told the advisory committee on reactor safeguards that when they're analyzing a nuclear accident, they don't assume any leakage from the nuclear containment. Well, Fukushima Daiichi proved not once, not twice, but three times that nuclear containments can and do leak. But yet, in all of the NRC's analyses, they continue, even to this day, to assume that a nuclear reactor containment is essentially leak-proof. Moving on to slide 19 is Tokyo Electric's assumptions about what happened to the Unit 3 containment. You'll recall that's the one that blew straight up about a, about a mile high. Well, they assume that about 1,000 kilograms of hydrogen was somehow leaked out of the nuclear containment. And they blame that 1,000 kilograms on the explosion in Unit 3. Now, if you look at the bottom of that slide, somehow they assume that 1,000 kilograms of hydrogen got stuck in the basement. And from the basement, it blew upward through the building. Now, I think hydrogen is lighter than air, and one would expect that that hydrogen would have moved up through the building. And Tokyo Electric is not telling us how they, they can assume that something that's lighter than air can wind up in the basement. The other part of the problem, though, is that they haven't explained how the hydrogen got out. Did it leak through a side containment, like the containment hatch? Did it leak out through penetrations? They don't know. 